and welcome back to another video, another week, another Tuesday. You'll see that I'm certainly not by myself in this one. We have the wonderful Jamie, but the even more wonderful Jessica and Claudia. Hi. I'll take that. <laughs> I mean, I was, I was yeah, gonna, I was gonna contest that, but yeah. nah. <laughs> Don't it's even fair. try. It's fair. <laughs> Maybe you just have a different adjective. Oh. Oh. Yeah. You're delightful. So, Splendid. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> and the door is enabling us to socially distance. But it has glass in it, so I can look through to lip read. <laughs> so today we wanted to have a chat because it's quite unusual actually for us that we have friends who are also couples. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> unusual. We have <laughs> friends um, who are also a couple, but who are also mixed race. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you were Party. definitely the most excited I about know. that. I know, yeah. I was just like, okay. So, I'm Jessica. I am a cis lesbian and I'm white. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a mixture of European stuff, even though people on Twitter question my eyes. That's just, don't do that. And I'm Claudia. I'm also a cis lesbian and I'm half Chinese Malaysian and half white British or white English. White British. Because white British could be lots of things. Oh, that's true. Who are you, Jamie? Oh, I have to introduce myself too. Oh, well, I thought it'd be good for people who may not oh, realise okay. how we're different because everyone always, well, not everyone, but 90% of my comments, particularly on Instagram, are, are you Indian? Oh. So are you Indian? Interesting. Are you Indian? You're what brown. to Jamie? You must be Indian. <laughs> <laughs> I am Jamie. I am. Sorry, I don't know. I nearly said such enthusiasm. So forced. I nearly said I am a cis man. I am not. I am a bisexual trans man, and I am white. Yes. Are you British or are you English? I am Scottish. Oh. Being a <laughs> uh, And I am Mauritian and English, but in a different way to how you are, Claudia. Right? Because your parents are half half. Yeah. Whereas, like, my family are Mauritian, but I'm like second generation, so I'm. Oh, oh, it's so you... like that confusing so African American is... thing. Yeah. yeah. Where you can be Chinese American, but it doesn't mean you're half Chinese. Oh, half, half American. But or also, that's be... to be fair because American is not a thing. Or you can be African American or Afro Caribbean. And that's very different to be like, black because their culture yeah, yeah, isn't always be black. Like, mm. We were talking about this earlier, like mixed, when you say mixed race couple, like if I saw hashtag mixed race couple on Instagram, even I would expect to see two people that looked very different. Mm -hmm. But actually, race doesn't necessarily mean you look different. It could be just like you're culturally different because yeah. you could have the same kind of skin colour as someone, but mm. be from like another culture and part of the world. So for instance, you could be Jewish and you could be dating someone who is... French and if you're very culturally Jewish you're still coming from a very different standpoint yeah. to mm -hmm. the person who has lived in France. And some people might life. argue that that is a race you know that you are racially different as well. But you don't necessarily immediately read as different yeah much like as a straight couple yeah you might read as just being oh just this straight couple but actually there's so much more to you guys. So basically, none of us are vanilla. That is, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Do you think being mixed race plays a large role in your relationship? Does it come up very often? No, I don't think so. I mean, I said no, because again, like back to my point of like, I don't think we look a lot different and like really because i feel like you do <laughs> but, I, but i don't know if that's well according to all the people it. who come up to us and go are you sisters we don't look well, that different yeah i think you don't recognize the difference because you grew up with a white parent and a chinese malaysian parent mm. so for you blending Maybe British like British and yeah. Malaysian culture is just the norm. It that's already true. happened before but you came for me, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think that there is a big difference. Yeah, that's what you pointed out. You were like, oh, but like I like eat a lot of the food and I like, embraced a lot of the things you do, like yeah. mainly food food related. <laughs> yeah, I celebrate Chinese New Year, that's true. That's true. And we give each other like umpals, which are like the red envelopes and like, yeah, like little customs like that and stuff. You have Malaysian family members. Yes, obviously. But, obviously. <laughs> but the point is that you have, you do have things about you that are different yeah, culturally yeah. to what I have experienced before growing up. Mm. Yeah, maybe part. my view of it is that like because I have my Malaysian family, I see myself as British because compared to them, they're very well, Malaysian. The so they've got their yeah. culture. Mm. 
mm. I don't feel like I have that culture. I have British culture, and therefore I don't feel like when I compare myself to you, I'm like, oh, well, we share the same. Mm. More, yeah, more than we are different. That's really interesting. What about you? Do you feel like we're very different? I guess it's kind of diff- difficult for us because our story was so based on cultural differences. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah, like right from the beginning, the fact that we were from different cultural backgrounds had a massive impact. Smacked around impact. our faces. Yeah. Yeah, but now that we've gotten over the negative side, mm-hmm. I can clearly tell we're different. <laughs> and I, I really. And not just because of the lighting issues. <laughs> In every video and photo <laughs> ever. <laughs> I've loved kind of embracing another culture and like seeing you embrace your own culture more and more mm-hmm. and like us kind of becoming part of that and discussions over like how we introduce it to our kids yeah and different factors in our wedding and things like that to do with the different cultures that we're from mm-hmm. yeah. and i really enjoy that but i've also noticed like racial prejudice against you oh. that i would have been like completely unaware of and that and that's like on the surface level but i know it happens but then being with somebody, I saw it happening, and it's like... See, oh, that's really damn. funny, because I never mm. thought of that being new or something that you would share, oh. but yeah. It's You're funny right. that both of you, you both, like, recognise the differences or, like, maybe more than we do. You've both grown up in England, mm-hmm. right, mm. but with a different culture at home. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas for us, then going into that... Like, I always found, and this is not the same, don't worry, I'm not saying it's the same, but I, as a child, grew up with my family celebrating Swedish customs. Mm. So we would celebrate different Swedish traditions, and that was really weird for my friends, Mm -hmm. because we'd be eating different food at home and doing Christmas in a different way. It is in part the same, though, yeah. Yeah, so it's that kind of, Mm. like, ah, a little bit out of step from the people around you. It's been really nice exploring more about Malaysian culture. Yeah. And Do you feel I like think... you've learned about Swedish culture as well? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like every Christmas, Jessica comes down the stairs with like candles on her head, which obviously is really weird. Oh, really? But now I'm like yeah. getting more used to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's got Santa Lucia. <laughs> and we get like little Dala, how- Dala horses out, yeah. which are like the wooden painted horses. And now I can't imagine Christmas without them because they like really sort of represent Christmas to me oh. now. Because I realise that you see them in Christmas cards and things because obviously they're also part of like, well, they're very Swedish, aren't they? But like, I think a Swedish Christmas is quite a traditional looking Christmas. We make Easter trees. British people make Easter trees. Do they? Yeah. Oh, do they? Do they not? <laughs> <laughs> I love just staring you. Yeah. Do they, Jamie? Really British I've people. never heard of an Easter tree. Oh. I've heard of like an Easter basket. You have a uh, Burns Night. Yes, which yes. Is something my family is Oh, British. I know, it's my freaking birthday. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Every year at school. <laughs> like, it's but didn't Burns Night. Like, didn't Burns <laughs> actually write quite depressing poetry? Uh, There's a okay. ceremony where they bless the haggis. Bless. Yeah. There's like a poem. There's and fireworks. Everything. Dancing. Yeah. Bonfires. It's good to be fair, that. I we mean, sorry, that's a bit harsh, because we have Guy's Forks Night, which yeah, was about true. a terrorist bombing our House of the Parliament, and we're like, woo! It's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so fair to say we've all enjoyed being part of mixed race, mixed race relationships mm. and the new experiences yeah. brought. Mm-hmm. And I think, obviously, living in it, like, it, you realise it's beyond just a superficial skin colour. And I'm really conscious of not, I don't know, whitewashing Claudia. So especially when we have uh, when we have children, I don't want them to lose that part Sorry. of their heritage, because yeah. obviously mm. it's really important, mm-hmm. and it's really important to you, and I want to make sure that we celebrate as many Chinese, Malaysian things as you want. Yeah. And, you know, have things around the house from Malaysia, and Absolutely. keep in contact with... That, well, like me and my family, like kind of thing. me and my sister both have like Chinese middle names, so we're gonna carry on that tradition of giving our children like a Chinese middle name, I love that. even if they come out like blonde, blue eyed. Well, part of your heritage is actually <laughs> like fully Chinese. Yeah. So my twin sisters are the same. They're twins with each other, not me, and they're <laughs> nine now. One of them has blonde hair and blue eyes. Mm. You would not think that her dad was brown. But yeah, she loves l- listening to it, at least. <laughs> at least I think she does. All the Mauritian things and the customs, mm. even though she doesn't look that way. So yeah, I think it's important. Yeah, yeah. I think the okay. idea that you could only be classified as part of a culture if you look the stereotypical it's way so of silly. that culture yeah. is yeah. so unfair. Yeah. Because people are, 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 you know, born of all different colours. Do you ever feel that you're not quite one or the other enough? Um, no. I like, I like being mixed race because mm-hmm. um, I feel like it's almost like sometimes I feel a bit 
ashamed of British people, like in some of their actions and decisions, like Brexit, and then I can almost like distance Preach. myself from it and yeah. be like, well, you know, obviously I didn't vote for it because look at me, I'm mixed race. Why would I? You know, I know, like, yeah. I know oh that's like, I know, I know you're all like white. I know that's probably a really controversial thing to say. No, but no, like, no. can be like, ah, oh, white people. <laughs> yeah, like, but, but no, that was just, yeah. you. I probably it's the other way. Like when I go to Malaysia, that's when I feel a bit out of place because I feel like I should be able to speak my mother's like tongue language you know and converse with my relatives but I have to just speak English and they have to like they have to like speak have broken English to yeah. me yeah. and that seems a bit of a shame because then I feel like I have I've kind of rejected a big part of that side of me because not I intentionally haven't. no it but wasn't like, your choice to not learn Cantonese and also if it's any consolation I learn I, I know my mother tongue and I still feel out of place. So, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how much it helps. <laughs> it doesn't matter what language you talk to them in. No, you're right. And but that's interesting. Apart from like when I've had prejudice towards me, I've never I think been told or felt that I was not British enough apart from my own insecurities. Mm. But I've always felt not Asian enough mm. in the Asian crowd. Yeah. Yeah. But it's cool now because I've had so much self discovery. I'm in a place where I feel like I'm Hannah Montana. <laughs> oh my god. Like the best of both worlds, truly. I'll be like, yeah I like samosas. And I like fish and chips. Deal with it. Ooh. Not that you're going to tell me the fish and chips aren't British now. It's fine. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> I mean, what's that say about me? Because I like samosas and fish and chips. I was using that as a very crass <laughs> example, but you know what I mean. Very really complicated like, I hate now. I <laughs> hate like, wearing a sari or celebrating Eid, you know, or that sort of thing. Mm. It, it bugged me. I hated that my name was Sharda. I really wanted to have like a normal name like Claire. Oh. But now I really love my name. With Claire, you're... Why would you no, go with Claire and not like oh, right, Sarah? Sarah. <laughs> Which is at least... I saw a C and it just popped oh, up. Oh, see. Oh. <laughs> There's a big C for Claudia, yeah. <laughs> Next for Big J. Just That's but. true. I don't know how I would feel. Like, if I hadn't been called Claudia, which is like a European name, I think... I don't know how I would have felt. Maybe I would have felt like like I stood out more. Mm -hmm. and maybe, like, rather, And the whole point was that my dad wanted me to fit in. Because there, there was a, a family friend of ours, and both her parents, to be fair, um were like ethnically Malaysian Chinese so she looked different to I, to me. She had an English name but she actually once when she was a little girl she drew herself as like blonde and with a blonde family and they were like oh who's this and she was like oh it's my, me and my family and she was like quite in denial about her background because she was in such a white surrounding. That's so interesting. Because there's no one else at her school looked like her. Yeah well that's why I think it's really important that when we have children we have a very diverse group of friends around right. them and people that they see in the day to day because you know they say that when a baby is under a year old they need to see as many diverse faces as possible mm -hmm. in order to then recognize that human faces all look different apparently babies can differentiate between the faces of monkeys yeah, yeah. we were watching that program it's <laughs> netflix babies that's good <laughs> and it is like true because you know there was that um the i think he was chinese the scientist and he said that everyone looked the same to him um, honestly that's that's sort of still things that i say today can i just say um jessica's man blind yeah she thinks all men look the same <laughs> Well, yeah, yeah, that. I grew up not able to tell the difference between different boys. <laughs> I don't know, it's just a boy. Maybe as a baby you were just always like honed in on like women. Like. I was a very gay baby. <laughs> yeah. I do come from a very female family though, I would just like to say. I have seven aunts and a lot of cousins and they're mainly all female. Yeah. The yeah. upside is, whenever you look at like school photos, you can spot me off a mile away because I'm like the only oh. brown dot in the oh. sea of white. Just be like, doink, there she is. Is that because you, your school is also not very diverse? Yeah, I mean, I went to like 14 different schools. Oh. Um, my first ones in London were all incredibly diverse. Yeah. And then we moved to Essex in like a smaller village and it's very white. Yeah. Yeah. I went, I've been to seven different schools and my first school was in London in Islington and it was really diverse. And then we moved to Bristol where basically the entire school was white and there was one family who were black, one family, and everyone else was just very, very pale. And I had quite a culture shock from it, from being at this school yeah. where it was re really, really diverse. And where did everyone like, go? <laughs> <laughs> oh you said you on? could speak um, fluent Persian. Yeah, when I was a kid, but it's gone wow. now. That's amazing. That's so cool. Even you said that you knew of the one brown kid in your school that was like always told they smell like curry. It was oh, so what? Mean. Yeah, no, the bullying. 
of yeah. the kids who weren't white in primary school was terrible. Yeah. Was just like... I think that's pretty much what my dad like uh, experienced when he was at school because he had a lot of like um, Pakistani people coming over as well. Mm. Like, and he used to say like, oh, like they obviously they just were they were just always the kids of the people at the corner shops. Like, mm. so they would always make remarks about that. And like, that's mm. funny you say that because in Scotland, I'm not going to say it, but the p word that I find very offensive. Yeah. Um, that's what your parents call news agents Great because growth. that's just yeah. I mean, yeah. they're just yeah. like we're going to go to the P yeah, not yeah. like not now but like mm. growing up yeah. it was just really that's not what a my, bad that's thing. what my dad was telling me he was like oh it was <laughs> yeah. just your I'm uncomfortable. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so there's a, there's a lot of like words that were said just to describe something and weren't seen as derogatory. Yeah. Like yeah. it's the same with a lot of words that are based around disability. Oh, and then sometimes so I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh. Final question. Yes. And I think it's something that we all have a bit of a potluck with, and okay. we've had so many conversations about this. When we have a baby, mm -hmm. assuming we can have a biological baby, mm -hmm. even if we can't, the donors that we find will match us, right? Yeah. Our baby could end up being very white, yes, yeah. or very brown, or very in the middle. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and similarly, you could have yeah. variants in yours. How does it feel? Because you you turned around one day, Jim was just like, "If we have a brown baby, my baby could experience racism." And I <laughs> haven't. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not yeah. equipped mm. for this. <laughs> How does that make you feel? Like, so we kind of have an experience of that very recently, in that we have two nephews, and one of them looks like a baby Claudia and like so cute yeah but he looks like he's quite you would look at him and assume one of his parents was Chinese yeah and then our second nephew is blonde he's almost ginger. his skin like is more kind of, is much yeah. pinker before the second one came along yeah. we just assumed our baby would probably look like, like the first one like mm -hmm. and pick up more of my sort of Chinese genes. You kind of assume that don't you? Especially yeah. Everyone, like, you think, says, oh mixed race babies are so cute. Like, and you so just yeah. oh, darker hair, and you think the darker, probably over Yeah, you think the darker mm. genes are stronger. Mm. I was surprised when I saw yeah. the twins. I was like wait you're too white. Like, mm -hmm. Maybe you'll bake over time. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> but then of course I have like my dad's genes in me. So I have like the blonde hair blue eyed genes. So mm -hmm. like we could have a blonde hair blue eyed kid yeah it would be very interesting yeah so we were said oh like maybe our baby will be a little bit redhead and that's kind of like jessica's got quite excited about that yes. yeah. <laughs> i have thank you i want Aww. our baby to look like a mix of us yeah. yeah but we definitely will be doing everything we can to bring out that haggis every burns night <laughs> bring out the samosas every <laughs> eid like it's gonna happen oh I want yeah them to grow yeah. up as mixed as they can be i want them to be immersed in both cultures yes. yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. And you say you're worried about like not experiencing racism, but you have experienced like discrimination. Yeah. yeah so it's the same yeah. sort of thing. I think it was just that realization of like I'm obviously aware that Sharon and I are from different cultures and are different races, but I just was thinking, I was like, oh, our, our baby is gonna be a different race to me. Mm. And like that was just interesting, and I was like, we're gonna have to communicate a lot about how to make sure that they are ingrained in both cultures and like raised. With like the knowledge and stuff and it's yeah. just I, th I find it exciting but then i would also worry i don't want them to be discriminated against someone. i also think there's homework there though because i feel like even me being brought up in like an increasingly white area mm. and with very polarized views we're all just naturally going to go towards a more british western way i'm gonna find those asian aunties and <laughs> uncles and force my baby in their face be like teach them your ways <laughs> <laughs> well our babies can hang out together yes oh, and I share their cultures oh. that would be so share cool. their cultures <laughs> oh little baby will give you one an umpow this is my dodo dodo what, <laughs> <laughs> what? dodos are the native I'll birds of Mauritius is what? Oh, but they're extinct. Yeah. But they're on everything. But why did you say, here's my dodo and point to me? <laughs> You're saying I'm a dodo. <laughs> yeah, this is my dad, but I just call him Dodo because he's really useless. Cute name. That'd be such a cute name for you, Dodo. <laughs> I visualise <laughs> everything. Are extinct, I was just imagining your tiny little child giving a little red <laughs> envelope <laughs> to my tiny little child. And my tiny bringing on a dodo, a stuffed one. Like, yeah, having like my tiny little dodo plushie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just being like, it's my dodo. Oh god, I can't, I'm dying. Oh, Out of context, anyway. though, that's so <laughs> Anyway, now we've got Jamie a dodo. Well, then you can be a woolly mother. <laughs> Thank you. Hey! <laughs>
We're going to continue anyway. this domestic off camera. I yeah. hope you have found this insight insightful uh, into the lives of mixed race couples. If you would like, and I strongly suggest you do this, to take a look at Jesse and Claude's life in more detail and their wonders of online, you could do so at Jessica Kelgan Fozard, my YouTube, or Jesse and Claude is our Instagram. And I will put all the lovely links downstairs in the description box. Oh, and Jamie's too. <laughs> <laughs>